Okay, so now we're on to hypothesis testing. And the first one we're going to do is hypothesis testing about a one sample and we're looking at a single mean. So we're given an example here, tablets are manufactured so they contain 25 milligrams of active ingredient, a sample of 20 tablets are randomly selected and analyzed. Here's the values in milligrams. We want to test if the true mean amount of active ingredient is significantly different from 25 milligrams at the 5% significance level. For all marks we have to give blah 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 blah. Let's have a go. So the first thing we need is to write down the null and alternative hypothesis. So first of all, the null. Null hypothesis is that. So we use mu, and we'll define that in a second. And we so mu is the true mean amount of active ingredient in a tablet, and we think that is equal to 25. The alternative hypothesis, which we indicate with an underscore a, is that mu is not equal to 25. So notice, basically, to recap what we said in that is the null is the status quo. It's the innocent until proven guilty. This is what we believe beforehand, and we're going to base all our calculations on this. And this is what we're trying to show. We think that the tablets now is different from 25. So we think it's different from 25. So we assume that it's the same as 25 and then see if there's a difference. So now we need the observed test statistics, the p-value in our conclusion. Right, how do we do this? First, we'll need to get our data into R. So we're going to copy it. So not R, MATLAB. MATLAB, we'll call it drug, put the bracket, Pull that data, close it. So use square brackets, space in between, and there we got it. If we look at drug, it's all there. We can look at the mean of drug, etc. So if we go to our cheat sheet, here we are. So we've got hypothesis testing for a single mean. This is what a non alternative is going to look like, where I've put mu zero, define our, um, our pre specified value. We're not told our population standard deviation, so we use our S and we've got a T. And we basically take sample mean minus the pre specified divided by S divided by root N. Then we can calculate our p value and also we can calculate confidence intervals. All this can be done automatically for us in MATLAB. Now that's just made me realize what I should have put here, what I haven't put is I should define what mu is. So let Let mu be the true mean amount of active ingredient in a tablet. So <clears throat> to get full marks, it says here that I have to define all terms used. So I use mu, so I've just defined it. Anyway, so now back to MATLAB. So I want to take this information, and we have a mean of 24.1445. So that seems a lot lower than 25, but is it significantly low? Well, we can test. We do a t-test. We give the observations. And the next number we do is we tell it what number we want to test for. We want to test for 25. So if I just do that, it just gives me an answer, it gives me a true or false. So one means that we reject and zero means we retain. Not much use though. So instead, what you can do with MATLAB is you can actually give it a load of things it will pass back. So the first one will be our hypothesis test, the next one will be our p-value, then we've got a confidence interval, and then we want some stats. So it's basically saying to MATLAB, instead of just returning one number, the H, return me a load of stuff. So now I hit return. Now I get a load of stuff. I still get that first number. So H, remember, 1 means we reject. 0 means we retain. I'm given a p-value. I'm given a compass interval. And I'm given a load of extra information as well. So first thing we want, we want the observed test statistic. Well, the observed test statistic. If you come down here, you can see we've got stats. We've got a t-stat. So remember, what we're going to calculate is a t-stat 
and that that's done it for us. T stat. So this number here is my absolute value. The p value. Go back here. The p, this one here is the p value. So we've got 5.33 times 10 to the minus 4. So let's copy that. And we can actually just leave it like that, that's fine. Conclusion. Well, there's a couple of things. We should write down our conclusion. We can see from MATLAB it says 1, so we're going to reject. But we should justify our rejection as well. So our conclusion, um, we reject the null hypothesis as the p-value is 5.33 e to the minus 04, which is less than 0.05. Why did I choose 0.05? Because we were told to test at 5% significant level. So 5% significant level, you basically use the value 0.05. And if your p-value is less than this, you reject. If it's greater, you retain. So this is obviously less than 0.05, so reject. And what's our final conclusion? Therefore, there is strong evidence that the mean amount of additive Ingredient is significantly different from 25 milligrams. In fact, it is less than 25 milligrams. How to get the last bit? Because when we first went in, we had 24, so I think it's less than. Okay, confidence interval, nice and easy. If you look here, the CI, I've done it, so the third that comes out as a confidence interval. It's calculated for us. So we can put that in. So let's make it look neater. Brackets, comma, brackets. And one of the things we discussed in the lecture is the fact that there's, when you do hypothesis testing, there's three ways you can test inside a reject or tape. The first one is the p-value. You look at this p-value. If it's less than 0.05, you reject. If it's greater, you retain. The other one is your observed test statistic, this minus 4.1589. As a rough rule of thumb, if this number is less than minus 2 or greater than 2, you're going to reject. So that agrees with this. This says reject. This says reject. The final thing you can do is you can get your confidence interval. Notice the 95%, so the 95% corresponds with the 5%. You know, one is the other from 100. 95% confidence interval, you create it, you look at this and say, does it contain this number here, which is a hypothesized value, which is 25. 25 is not in this range, therefore we reject. If it was in this range, we retain. That's it. Goodbye.